Is software engineering dead? Is it too late to get into data science? Should I even bother to learn how any of these AI things work? Are all the jobs in tech going to be automated by AI or replaced by robots? Is programming useless now? Have I been wasting all my time? Is data science dead? I thought we just got into data science. We're too late. We're too late. We're too late. Hey, hey. No. No. If you're looking for what can you study or get into right now to have a chance to be part of the next big thing or to have useful skills for whatever's coming next, I think this is it. I get it. There's a lot of incendiary information out there. The job market seems to be in shambles. Nothing they used to work and guarantee you a good job seems to actually be that reliable anymore. And there's been more changes at a more accelerated rate than we've probably ever seen within this field. I think it used to be that we would get at least like a decade before a technology became obsolete. And if you didn't learn the new thing, you were this tech dinosaur in the back of the office that no one really wanted to talk to. And yet now things are moving so fast that even someone who got into data science at the absolute peak when it was being called the sexiest job of the 21st century already feels like I'm falling behind and people are asking if even data science is dead and not worth getting into anymore. And it really hasn't been that long. We're in a very weird space in technology right now where everything is changing. We have these amazing technological breakthroughs that have gone far beyond what anyone hoped or dreamed that they would be. Things have been accelerating really, really fast and people seem to be swept up or left behind in the speed and mess of it all. While at the same time, even for people who are caught up or in the middle of the hype or the buzzword technology, it's a very strange feeling. I don't think we're really happy with it. Think about it. In the ML data science AI field right now, we have these amazing tools that can do so much more than anyone could have imagined a few years ago. And their adoption has gone so wide. Everyone has access to the most amazing AI model at their fingertips that we used to have to train overnight to perform the most basic tasks just a few years ago. And yet we're being told that the most amazing breakthrough use case that they can do is be your travel assistant and book flights, do automated CV matching for HR, or spit out very questionable Gen AI art and replace real artists. I don't know about you, but that's pretty underwhelming. It feels like we have these really, really cool tools, but we don't quite know where to put them yet to actually get good impact for society or even just be profitable. So if you think that you don't really know where you and your skills could fit within all of this, I think the whole field doesn't really know where to fit into all of this, to be honest. But I have a bit of an inkling about where we might be headed. As a jaded AI professional who has grown pretty critical and mistrustful of the field as of late, there is an area that I'm seeing a lot of promise in and is actually getting me excited. Like back when I saw the first Iron Man movies, excited. <laughs> I'm talking about bringing the innovations of LLMs into the physical world with physical AI. Now, obviously I'm not the person who discovered this or not by far the first person to talk about it. It has been in the news cycle. Some of the industry titans, so to say, have been using and coining this term as well. So it shouldn't be completely new, but for how much potential it has, I don't think it's getting nearly enough attention. If you're looking for what can you study or get into right now to have a chance to be part of the next big thing or to have useful skills for whatever's coming next, I think this is it. We've all seen how impressive LLMs like ChatGPT can be. You can have conversations with them and with just the use of a few tokens and a lot of training data, they seem to have an answer to pretty much anything. They can not only talk to you like a human, but they're starting to be able to perform tasks and generate code and they're being used in more and more processes. And we can take it one step further. When we bring these LLMs into the field of robotics and the physical space, instead of LLMs, we get VLAs, vision, language, action models. Instead of just text with the multi-model approach, we can take in pictures or videos and pretty much samples of an environment and determine by analyzing this environment, what should be done next. And this can come back in form of actions. What kind of actions? Well, for example, the movement of a robot or the way that a physical device can interact with this environment without having explicitly been trained to do so. And I cannot emphasize enough how impressive and new this is. If you look at the field of robotics right now, it already has such a complex and multidisciplinary approach, right? You need to be good at math and physics and programming from the physical representations and the way that you would model and 3D print or put together an actual robot, the way that you would define its movement with like signal processing and all kinds of complex physics and calculus. 
everything that goes into that just to make the smallest movement and the way that the model has to be trained in order to reliably reproduce such a movement. Instead, if we can harness the power of AI and LLMs and use it to make the robot understand its environment better, generate these movements automatically, and even learn and adapt to new use cases so you don't have to generate immense amounts of data and simulations just to be able to do anything basic, it's, it's, it's amazing, okay? It's pushing the field forward so much. It's making these robots more intelligent. It's taking away this big part of work and instead giving a tools to these robots engineers to focus on other parts of the robot design and to be able to achieve so much more. For the field of robotics, amazing innovation, pushing everything forward. For the field of data science and AI, much cooler use case. And bringing these together, even if you're not in any of these fields, this is such futuristic tech. Think about how many factories can be made smarter and how many processes can be made more and more efficient. The idea, of course, isn't completely new, right? We've seen different attempts to have humanoids robots look impressive, but they've never quite gotten it right so far. Of course, we have like Boston Dynamics that have shown that different creatures can jump over different types of boxes. We have fighting and dancing robots that can do a lot of impressive things when it comes to movement, but haven't been particularly useful. We've had, of course, the uncanny valley that is Sophia and different other approaches of bringing intelligence into robots. And of course, we have the less glamorous but actually useful manufacturing types of robots that aren't humanoids, and frankly, they probably shouldn't be, but they're very efficient in what they do, and they can already automate and speed up a lot of processes. But what we're looking at now is having foundational models for robots. We would have this base layer of intelligence that can be adopted in so many fields, and rather than starting from zero, you could start from an already pretty good model that you can then specialize with different hardware, different tasks, different industries, and it would just be so much cooler. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like really excited about this. <laughs> it just feels like the perfect marriage between really impressive technology and actual worthy use cases. Because I don't know about you, but I would much rather have a robot that can fold my laundry and do a few tasks around the house than I would have a new MCP server or a new chatbot app on my phone or some weird AI art on my walls. The whole point of AI and robotics should be to help humanity get rid of things that we don't want to do and make us able to do more of the things that we do like spending time on and where human expertise can really make the difference. So how can you get started and get ready for this? Now, there's a lot of different building blocks that get into it and some level of programming and math understanding and by extension, things like data science will always be useful, okay? These are just a translation of things like critical thinking and innovation into how we interact with technology. And this is something that will always be useful for everyone. So whoever says, oh, AI is going to do that for me now, no. AI can generate code, sure but you still need to be able to understand if it's the right thing to do, how to prompt it, how to think like an engineer or a programmer. And there's a lot of skills within that area that will always, always, always be needed, no matter how intelligent AI gets. So programming and math, future-proof, absolutely no question about it. Then specifically for physical AI, there's quite a lot of different areas that we want to look at. We want to get some data science fundamentals, understand things like computer vision and natural language processing. We want to get some programming and software engineering skills overall, like being able to design efficient code and different architectures. And we want to understand parts of the physical world and the robotics, such as electronics, microcontrollers, and different components that can be built together like that. Everything can be an incremental study, right? So if you look at my series of building a robot arm, for example, I wanted to understand where all of it comes from. So we took a look at how microcontrollers and rotors work, how you can put it together with stuff you have around your house, how you can then make it better with things like 3D printing and open source solutions, how you can add AI tools to it, like using Copilot to generate different movements for your robot. There's a lot of things that you can build up upon. You just have to start somewhere. So I would start with that, build something yourself just to get a feel of it, but that's really just the first taste. Then you can move on to a solution like Hugging Faces Le Robot. They basically took the same approach of, hey, physical AI is going to be a really big thing. They saw things like physical intelligence's Pi Zero, which is one of the most 
groundbreaking models out there right now, the one that can learn to fold laundry and they want to make that accessible. So they're making it available to install on your laptop and they design their own basic robot architecture in the Le robot arms. So you can try it at home, install the software and start playing with these models yourself. And they also have a full tutorial series and course on how to get into it. We're going to go through that on this channel as well and I'll walk you through it step by step. There's educational courses from NVIDIA on how to use their Jetson platform and create simulation data and learn to make intelligent robots through that. We're also going to test that out and give you an overview of it. Then there's different frameworks like the ROS2 that's been widely adopted for creating modular parts of robotics that can communicate with each other. That's something we can take a look at as well. And of course, we can test out various solutions already on the market in terms of making intelligent robotics applications and combining those with AI in various ways. And who knows, maybe I'll even get one of those neo weirdos that can walk into your house and do chores for you. But probably not, because it's actually just a teleoperated robot, which means that someone on the other side of the world is doing the movements and the robot is copying it in your house. Which also shows the final and most important example of why it's a good idea to get to know this field a bit better. These solutions are being pushed to the market and it really pays off to kind of understand how these things work so you don't fall for fake promises, which is a very useful skill to have no matter how technical you are or what field you work in. So there you have it. If you want to learn something for 2026 or for your future career, you cannot go wrong with physical AI. Get a bit of experience with electronics, get some basic understanding of data science, see how these can work together and actually build your own solutions that can help you in the physical world with the best of the technological breakthroughs that we've been seeing. I don't think there's a more exciting thing that you can get into, so follow me on this journey and let's discover the best of it together. I'm Yulia, welcome back to engineering.